Hey guys, it's Matt. Uh, Jeremiah asked that I revisit this topic, something we've talked about many times over the years, but I'm going to try to take this as far as we've ever taken it in terms of our understanding of what's going on, especially everything that's been thrown at us over the last year or two. We have a whole new understanding and we're bringing different ideas to the table we've never even thought about in the past, so this is a very appropriate timing. It's going to be on what's called now predictive programming. I don't like the word. I prefer things like reality markers. I don't like the way the term kind of guides us into thinking as to what may be happening here. But for anybody new to this topic, we'll start small. Basically, someone sent me this a while back. I don't know what movie it's from, but it's years ago. Nobody making this movie right should have had any idea or any understanding of what's happening now. But it, prevent, it presents the name of the beer in terms of what's happening now and today's special wash your hands. Now, I'm sure this was a glance. It probably was just a few seconds in the movie. And we say, what is going on here? Now, if we tell anybody around us, uh, look at this example, they, of course, immediately dismiss it because it's taken as a one-off where we've been looking at these things over almost a 10-year period of time, and we have thousands of these examples. Maybe when we had 100, we started to think a bit differently. Now that we have thousands of these types of examples, where something in the past is incredibly accurate in predicting the future, it's no longer a coincidence. I found this one relatively recently. It's the Michael Douglas movie, Don't Say a Word, and the bottom is probably too blurry to read, but I assure you, the way it's presented, it codes 9-11, right in the release date of the movie, right in the middle of the horror of that day, don't say a word. There's that, there's the release date. So, guys, everybody has their own understanding as to what's going on here. But I ask you not to dig in and just, as you watch this, try to push your own position. I'm going to try not to do that myself, although I favor certain uh, over some explanations over other explanations, we need to start small and, and with a fresh slate in looking at this in terms of what's actually occurring here, what's actually happening. The way to start, in my opinion, is very simple. Is it men and women running around doing all of these incidents, every single example? Is it just called in and planned among men, among women, people, that sit down on the john just like you and me, or is there something else going on? Something else going on opens up the mind to a million things, opens up the mind to supernatural, things we can't comprehend. So that's the first fork in the road. This is, of course, the famous Super Tramp album cover, where if you mirror it, flip it, the 9 is right over the tower, the 11 is right over the tower, the orange, <clears throat> of course of the drink, the you're looking out a plane window. <clears throat> and on its own, the normies around us will explain this away as sheer coincidence. Well, not when you've seen it happen thousands of times to varying degrees over about a 10-year period. <clears throat> this is the big one. It always has been the big one. Um, they're going to New York. Well, years before it happened, of course, the $9 program flashes right in front of the trade centers, and BART specifically puts the money and flashes the money right in front of the number. Now, again, the people around us would find a way to just say it's coincidence, but we're not here to address those people. They, they at some point, may decide to remove their head from their ass, but it's unlikely. We're going to do this exercise for ourselves. Other than what I just showed you, the other big ones always surrounded the movie Back to the Future, where you have the DeLorean disappearing into the past, creating the fire strip of the 11. The 9 on the left is the Western Auto sign. And it's not just that this will show you 9-11 in Back to the Future, which is roughly 25 years before the event, or maybe 30 years before the event in 2001. The double 11 in flames point right to a movie theater, of which the movie playing is The Atomic Kid with Mickey Rooney. The Atomic Kid with Mickey Rooney is about Mickey Rooney, a, a kind of a bumbling idiot. It's a slapstick kind of movie who's caught at Ground Zero. The official term for Ground Zero is the exact point over a nuclear detonation. So it's about Ground Zero, the movie, where the 11 points. 
Really? The main qu- issue, don't dig in what you think's happening. I know certain people think, well, they're just mocking us, Matt. I get a lesson on that all the time. They're just mocking us, Matt. They're just mock. No, we need to be more open-minded than that. And it starts with saying, do you think it's just regular men and women planting this now thousands and thousands of times? Now, I, I shouldn't lead people because I do believe it's more than regular men and women. So I shouldn't mock that in my presentation, but I guess I can't help it. I don't think it's ring, ring. Hey, it's Joe from the Lodge. Did you make sure you code the 911? And did you make sure you code the 33? It's just, just people talking back on the fourth on the phone because they didn't have texting way back when, and they just had the phone. And, you know, it's just guys and girls talking and planning all this, and they're getting off on it, and they're getting getting all warm in their loins, knowing they planted this, and they just they just toast their cognac. I think it's more than that, okay? I think it's there's supernatural elements and or even retro causality type things occurring here, okay? Once you get out of the little box that says it must just be regular men and women who planted the Twin Pines Mall and the 9-11 flipped, and then it goes from, of course, the Twin Pines to the Single Pines, the Twin Towers to the sig- Single Freedom Tower, the two into one. Yeah, I, but, I, but I'm, again, I want to make it very clear, Just it's not one or the other either. The people that run this place carry... A degree of ancient knowledge. They know how it works, okay? So they will code and plant when they can as well. Maybe as an ode to their masters, I don't know. It's done by regular men and women in some circumstances, but it shows up too much, too frequently, especially recently, the 33s and every single news headline, every single article where people aren't just making phone calls. Well, I'm sorry, now we're in the modern era. They can text to make sure that the editor of the newspaper has included the 33 or whatever it happens to be. I think it's both, but I don't think you should be stuck in a box that says it has to be regular men and women because you understand once you get out of that box, what opens up to you? The universe opens up to you. A million possibilities. Once the fish in the fish tank at least will acknowledge that there are a million potential things happening other than they're just fish in a fish tank, there could be a lot outside this little tank, then the world opens up into where they could take their mind. Now, I would like to get back and address the slide I just went over, which I will pause in a, in a minute to do that or come back to it. But um, back to the future, I mean, there's just four major ones. The, 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 the parallel to Biff, to Trump, is just ridiculous, right down to his looks. Right down to his looks, in terms of the way he acts, the casino in Back to the Future 2, I mean, it is supposed to be Trump. Now you tell your uncle that, he's going to think you're nuts. The picture up top, there it is. The Illuminati card game, but decades ago, predicted how many things now? I could do, I could just show you cards from this Illuminati card game. And in the case of the Illuminati card game, one might say, well, Matt, this favors a situation or scenario where the controlling masters did unfold the script of your life and did plant things. And I would agree. I would agree. That is, that that the Illuminati card game represents that. But it's more than that. It's more than that. It's one thing to talk about the Illuminati card game and another to talk about the, uh, the, whatever, the champions of Chamberlain Heights, this, uh, you know, they crash Kobe's helicopter. And uh, of course, the cartoon shows the exact manner of his death years before he died. And again, anybody getting upset at me, certainly this one could be planned and called in, but they're all not. We just have too many examples at this point. Come back to this image. I got sidetracked on something. I I wanted to complete my point. This is Back to the Future 2, where it looks like they're looking out a window, but it's a futuristic apartment where you have a screen on the wall and you can put whatever you want. So the Twin Towers are here. She flashes to the Twin Pines. Different scenes are out this window. It's a fake window. Well, you notice that in front of you, there are the, many of you have seen this, but if you haven't, I have to go through it. Those are boots. Somebody's hanging upside down. Somebody related to the family, like Grandpa, is hanging upside down. Uh, They are boots, you see, with the tip toe of the boot pointed into Elizabeth Shue's head. So as they change scenes, the Twin Towers roll up. They go straight up. However, you know, people have talked about this. Uh, I didn't certainly didn't come up with this. Uh, It was um, barely human, whatever, in their video, Back to the Future predicts 9-11. From the perspective of the guy hanging upside down, the towers 
scroll down as if they are collapsing down the same way that happened in 2001. So you have this, you also have the person hanging upside down, to me screams jumper. It's exactly the pose. And also their feet, you know, not to the same scale, but their feet are right outside South Tower or whatever, per what's on the screen here. It screams jumper to me. So again, as we do this, the only thing we're doing right now, okay, the only thing we're doing is we're making a determination in our own mind, is men and women doing this, just calling it in from the Trilateral Commission, calling it in from the CFR, calling it in from Bilderberger, or are there supernatural elements related to how certain things weave through reality itself responsible for some of this? And I assure you, the more of these examples you've seen over a 10-year period, the more you will open up to the supernatural possibility because it's in the tens of thousands of these examples at this point. Okay? The asterisk. This was big in Europe, I guess. We've seen this recently. The asterisk cartoon predicting the thing that must not be named or you'll get a flag from the CDC under your video. Um, you know, I don't. this goes back a long way. Some of these predictive elements, predictive programming, reality markers go back 20 to 30 years before the event. I mean, really? Just guys and girls calling it in? We're going to talk about all the potential possibilities. I'm just trying to go very slow in the intro here. I'm going to talk about all the possible things that are going on here in what this will become a long video. I came upon this recently. The top of the lab record label is called Private Stock. It's like a, you know, a cattle type slogan. Private Stock. And then you have the arrow pointing to the North Tower and where it says pub, I guess, publisher, Barry Gibb. That's going right through the 91st floor where the first incident, exactly where the first incident took place on the North Tower. Of course, everybody around us would call it a coincidence. You only will see it as not a coincidence when you've seen over a thousand of these. So, you know, just you have minions at different levels. You've got your Henry Kissinger minions all the way down to the soulless beings of, of a vintage space chick, for example. I make jokes about her, but no, she doesn't She doesn't come by my house with the boombox playing uh, in your eyes. But, you know, who's? what do these people know? How are they pulling all of this off? This is a clip from um, the movie's Branded. We talked about Branded a few months back, where the executive of the Tokyo or the Chinese company, you can see the brand actually plugging into his psyche where coincidentally where neo plugs into the matrix right the back of the neck so you get into topics if people are executing this and it is just regular men and women well are they of their doing of their own actions are they beyond mind controlled are they brainwashed are they actually getting a download that's the only way it could be just regular men and women all the time Courtney sent this in re recently. This came on after watching The Walking Dead. Just regular cable channel walk watching The Walking Dead. Four bizarre things came on. Now, it looks like an old TV from the 70s, but they're showing you an old TV on her new flat screen. This isn't her TV. But after The Walking Dead, which is already a, uh, a metaphor or an analogy of what they believe the masses to be, The Walking Dead, in, in and of itself, it's making a statement as to what they think you are. But this comes up, Idiot Box pointing to the Twin Towers, the two uh, lightning bolts, pointing to things that look like the Twin Towers. It's like a video game. It's this very easy, easy, normal, hard idiot box with something that's pointing to something that looks like the Twin Towers just after watching a regular episode of The Walking Dead. Now, this isn't predictive programming because it's well after 2001, but I'm going to talk in this video about how that the things that they have to show you or things that they seem like they have to reveal it does relate to predictive programming, whether it's before or after the event. I think they have to be discussed kind of in the same conversation. Then, according to Courtney, this came up. You are idiot box, it says. Then this came up. You are idiot box, time, 0 0.01. Well, is that a reference to 2001? Well, this, there was symbolism to the Twin Towers in the screen before, probably. Then this came up, skybound. What does this mean? Who knows? Who knows? But it is the third thing that came up. It's totally bizarre. And then it was followed by this. Circle of confusion. This came on back to back to back to back. She took screenshots, sent them to me, just after watching The Walking Dead recently. 
So again, everybody we'd show this to would think we're nuts, but we've seen it too many times. The last shot that bounced around four impossible times on the rim to beat the Sixers, the greatest shot in playoff history. What do we have going on under the impossible shot? 9-11 right there underneath to the right, double 33s. Then the 23 above that, 2 divided by 3, 666. And there's something else here I'm not even showing you in this blurry image. So the greatest shot of all time codes all of the major occult numbers right under the rim. Coincidence? Not after the 4,000th time you've seen it or the millionth time you've seen it. So again, when they do something where they have to, they're giving it away how ridiculous the situation is, like the big hair on the ISS. This is tied in to predictive program. This isn't predicting anything, I understand that. But when they show you, or you, some people would say have to show you, this does deserve to be in the same conversation as things that are shown before major events, like the Bart Simpson predictive programming, for example. Just like this, um, Donald Fagan, the Steely Dan guy, IGY, you know, what a beautiful world this would be. You know that song, IGY, International Geophysical Year. When you look into why he called it IGY, it's these creepy scientists coming together, I believe in the 50s, all these future uh, things they're working on. And, uh, you know, so, so he's not predicting the IGY, it had happened way before, but it's, a re it's revealing. It's not just Donald Fagan picking that. He was told to do that, okay? And of course, that's not something supernatural. That's somebody making a phone call. I realize that. Just like this, the, the bento box, this moron bento box. Um, the moment, I guess, he was supposed to be really sad and discussing the bang event in his hometown, this is the emotion he showed. He basically cackled and laughed like somebody told him the best knock-knock joke of all time. Well, this isn't predictive programming. It's happened after the fact. We've all seen this guy. Sorry for this particular... Well, it'll come down a little bit. You'll see his eyes in a moment. But this guy ran around after Manchester. You, you might see, remember the funny video. Somebody inserted like a woodchuck calling out Alan's name after this. He ran around and filmed himself looking for his boy who was supposedly blown up in the Manchester Ariana Grande bombing. Alan! Alan! He just ran around the scene. Alan! Alan! It's a joke. It was a joke. Of course, it happened after... It's not predictive programming. It happened after. But why they have to show you that absurdity? This guy, after after the gambling town incident, uh, gets out. He has two bullets lodged on either side of his spine that are inoperable, uh, according to his wife or handler there. But um, he's showing you his boo-boo. He's showing you his boo-boo. He got two, 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 three, five, five, sixes on either side of the spine. He can just walk out of the hospital two or three days later. And it's inoperable. And he's just going to go home. He just gets himself into the car. It's so absurd, so impossible, that we've talked about this many times. They're not making a mistake when they show you something that ridiculous. It's meant to get our intention. So that's something after the fact that's meant to get our intention. It's not a mistake. It's not them being... You know how many people have lectured me about, no, they're just getting sloppy, Matt, because they... No, no, they're not getting sloppy. It's meant for us, people like you and me. People like me, people like you and me to notice. Just like three hoses on the Notre Dame was meant for us to notice. Just like the impossibility of the Dylan, they always love the three names, Dylan, Storm, Roof, Lee, Harvey, Oswald, John, Wilkes, Booth. They love the three names. Does the three names give it away as a hoax by itself? No, but almost. Um, he's brought in for... Um, He's brought in for the family members to shout him down a couple days after the event. There had been no trial, no conviction. There had been no plead, nothing. But the family members are mostly forgiving him, but they had the opportunity to curse him to hell. It's just impossible. That could never be possible in any system we, that we're told a court system is in this country. But for some almost supernatural reason, nobody noticed, nobody said anything. Yeah, so these guys, I'm sure, they just can't get a better press conference than this. All the things we notice, all the weird anomalies in this press conference, it, it was live, right? They couldn't have reshot it. They couldn't. See, if, if, if we notice things, we're supposed to notice them. We were meant to notice them. That's how it works, okay? And it does deserve, well, why are you talking about that stuff if this is a... a, a, a a lecture series on predictive programming, which is shit that happened 20 years before that predicted the event. 
because I think they're linked in a way and tied in a way, just like this. The to me, the new Westworld um, logo, that is the 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 column that turns to dust behind her. To me, I'll, I'll stop and show it to you. Which is a 47-story building. It's like 650 feet tall, approximately. This has got to be over that. It physically disintegrates in front of your eyes. Uh, Mr. Wells, in your last book, The uh, Shape of Things to Come, you predicted war in 1940. Do you still adhere to that opinion? Yes, I still think that 1940 is the likely fact. There's a tremendous lot of war preparation and war feeling accumulating in Europe and in the world generally, but I don't think a war situation is likely to arrive before 1940. Lift its voice. Can the world not attain salvation without bloodshed? No, I think it's quite impossible that we shall get peace in the world and prosperity without a great deal more bloodshed. Just how much bloodshed, just how much suffering humanity has to go through, that depends on an incalcul incalculable factor. It depends upon the wisdom and the goodwill and the generosity of human beings. So far, they've been a little short in those elements. Is there a war situation in Europe today? I don't think so. Uh, there is the accumulation of war forces all over the world. But I do not see a war happening in Europe within the next five or six years. How about Asia? Uh, there the danger may be great. Uh, can you suggest a cure to the present economic ills of the world? What a splendid question. H.G. Wells, thou art a villain, an absolute monster, in my opinion. Now, if you just go back and watch that interview again, it's so staged. It's so put on. I mean, are you kidding me? And then they, they, there's, a, there's a special segment where they zoom in on him, and it's very high definition considering this was 1934. And when I said eight years, it is eight years before because the interview is 1934, he's predicting 19... He's predicting 1940, and I have a carrot shoved up my ass. Um, the book was two years before that, or three years, so it could be... The prediction is from the book, so it is eight or nine years out, predicted. Well, Matt, don't you know, Pearl Harbor was 1941. It's all about the United States. Everything's about the United States. No, the world believed it was in World War... Hitler in Poland, Czechoslovakia, etc. 19, 1940. So this asshole jerk got it exactly right. Now, obviously, okay, we know what's going on here. This is the best example of just a simple mouthpiece for the system, where it is just regular men and women. Just regular men and women using this guy as a mouthpiece, as a puppet. Very similar to the way Bill Gates is used today. You know, all his inventions, H.G. Well, H.G. Wells predicted all this and all these inventions. He predicted uh, the, the radio and the television and the toaster, and he predicted uh, space travel and satellites, and he predicted all this stuff that we have walkie talkies, and he didn't, pred he didn't predict jack shit. He was told what was coming in the future, whether it be a real presentation like a toaster or a fake presentation like guys going up with liquid fuel in a tuna fish can either way he was told what the future would bring to the masses and he was a mouthpiece for it because they didn't have a lot of movies and ways to drop truth so they used their puppets there are isaac asimovs and their hg wells and people like this go back i mean if, it's not that interesting but if you were to watch that the the quote live interview again not as live from 1934 but you would see how staged it looks even the reporters it's totally staged one guy is like just looking down at his pad the whole time and he's like 
What about Asia? I mean, it doesn't even sound nor. It almost sounds like reality rebuilding reality, and this shit never happened. Like the reporters, like, what about Asia? It doesn't even sound natural. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure. I don't. I don't think it's uh, a matrix reality rebuilding reality that never happened. I, I believe this likely did happen. But see, I keep the other weird shit on the table, and so should you. Do this. This. I don't believe this is a retro causality or anything. Anything weird. Weird ass horse shit like that. I believe it's just the, a puppet asshole mouthpiece of the system doing the system's bidding of the day, just like Bill Gates today. And in all, we have there's there's a, the problem that today there are there are hundreds and hundreds of these assholes, from Bill Gates all the way down to Illuminati puppets like LeBron James. Just because he can naturally jump, you know over a fire hydrant and dunk and can do things on a basketball court that I can't quite keep up with, that doesn't mean he's not an Illuminati puppet. That doesn't mean Tom Brady's not, just because they can do things uh, in, in, their, in their sport. Okay, so unfortunately today we've got a thousand of these bastards. And remember, we're still in the big thinking mode. I haven't even listed out the possibility as to what's happening yet. Just looking at how this stuff's being laid down and what needs to be included in the conversation. The endless eye symbolism has to be included in the conversation because dropping a reality marker, dropping a 33, a predictive programming, or dropping the eye endlessly is all in that same conversation. Just guys calling it in or are there other things going on where reality sees that this shit comes up? Neil. You know, he has this, the, it's the Apollo, Apollo rocket that looks like a needle uh, during the CV thing just a, a month ago. He was talking about CV, but he has a, the Apollo rocket on his tie looks like a needle. And then 35 years ago, Mike Wallace's needle looks like a rocket. Really? <laughs> I mean, the shit is endless. There's shit going on with reality itself, guys. We just don't understand. You want to dismiss that? Dismiss that. Here's the fraud Chris Hatfield, the astronaut. Look where he's, he's from Corona, Ontario. Look up top, top right. He's doing the interview. It's a real town. C-O-R-U-N-N-A, pronounced just like the same thing, Ontario. Thank you for somebody sending this in to me. It's shit just weaves in. If you want to think it's all planted, oh, we've Chris Hatfield's doing an interview. Where is he doing the interview from? Uh, Sausalito across the Golden Gate Bridge. No, no, no. We can't have that. Send him up to Ontario where he can do the interview from Karana, which sounds just, which which when you pronounce it is the, the thing that cannot be named. No, Chris Hatfield can't do the interview from Sausalito. Send him up to Ontario. We have to just drop that, and then we'll get off on it. We'll get off on it. Everybody can just drop their pants with their chubbers, and we'll in the Illuminati circle. We'll just get off on it. It's no more significance than that. It's just mockery and just that just like this this tiger shit we just get off on it okay guys i'm not going to really talk to the images anymore these most of these images are play just placeholders like this creepy fellow so look in terms of laying down truth of what's coming we know this happens in reality we know it the dummies around us don't then fine they can go back and watch the new episode of the connors but we know this happens Question number one, is it happened just by regular men and women, or is there something supernatural happening? Okay, I know I've repeated that many times. Let's move on to the heart of the matter here. What are the only possibilities that exist the way I see it? And I'm not arrogant enough to say every possibility that exists must be within the bookends of my own understanding, but we do have limitations here, and this is the best I can do in terms of my own understanding inside this avatar in this, in this incarnation. Number one, it's just pure mockery. All the thousands of things they've done over decades and decades and decades, every time they plan it and they just chub out and they just get off on it. It doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me and it's not consistent, in my opinion, how reality works. Do they enjoy a little bit of mockery here and there? Can we point to things saying that's mockery? Sure we can. Again, just because I, 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 d I don't think this is likely doesn't mean there aren't instances of it. All of these things are on the table. I'm just saying this isn't the primary to me. It's just not the way the reality works. You know, it's a spiritual battle. Spiritual battle with trying to reduce you down to nothing is not about mockery. It's about a lot bigger things like your eternal connection to spirit for the next trillions and trillions of years and i just i have to use those terms it's forever 
but I have to use terms because we that's the only thing we understand inside the snow globe is a is a time reference. One mockery. Nope, not for me. Two, some sort of universal law. I called it in the book some cosmic law of karma. Uh, says that for some reason, before they screw us over, they've got to show us certain things. And, you know, uh, a lot of people absolutely see it this way, and a lot of people really turn their nose up at that explanation. A universal law, come on, Matt, cosmic law of karma. I'm just telling you this, guys. I'm telling you this. There's some really smart people, okay? People that know their shit about reality, okay? That, I, that I've been in touch with over the years, that I've, I've listened to, or it, that, that this is on the table. Some call it universal law. I call it cosmic law of karma. Even if, it, even if a lot of smart people didn't see it this way, which means we have to leave it on the table, there is almost very, very other few explanations. Do you think this, this construct of, of, of unlimited complexibility, is that, was that a word? Um, simplification, no, unlimited complexity, um, you, why wouldn't you think it has rules of some kind? Why would you think it doesn't have rules of some kind? Even rules for the minions. Even rules for whatever George Bush and Jared Kushner serve crimpets to. Why would you think there's no rules of some kind here? They might be all powerful inside the snow globe or whatever, but not over my, my dominion personally, not over my spiritual self or higher self. In terms of the way they set speed limits and they, they screw people over in the courts and all the stuff they do, they, they have a, a, an incredible degree of power here in that regard. But who put them here? Yeah, who put them here? They didn't get here themselves. They didn't create this thing themselves. They're minions doing things here, screwing people over for their own aims, potentially fulfilling a higher goal, so we spiritually awaken. But they ultimately, if you back up far enough, they ain't that powerful. So why would you think there's no rules that even they have to follow? It's something to keep on the table, okay? Um, and in any conversation, this, I will reference this slide, it's it's we ha i believe if you know it's going to trigger a lot of people and i'm not going to focus on it here in this presentation but the mandela effect has to be on the table as being if I, it's a giant clue to all reality in my opinion this is somebody that spent countless hours sketching their favorite character in the vampire movie louis and they don't know the name as you'll see at the bottom they don't know the name of the movie they spent countless hours as a professional pencil sketcher, and then they call it interview with a vampire. They don't even know the name of their own movie. So anyway, not to I don't want to get into Kit Cash dashes into this in this video, but the Mandela effect to me always reminds me to keep the supernatural possibilities on the table, like a retro causality on the table. So so far. Why do they predictively program, for example, why did Bart Simpson flash the money in front of the, the nine in front of the towers? Well, it's one's mockery. Okay, we'll leave that on the table. Two, the universal law, they have to, per universal laws. You're gonna, some universal law, you're gonna screw these people over here? You gotta tell them. Universal laws, two. Three is retro causality. Okay, now what, we're gonna explore this one. Leave this one on the table. What this one means is, Basically, there was no predictive programming. I'll use Bart Simpson. It's people won't like the example, but I have to give a basic example so people understand the principle. He never did flash the wad of money up back in 90-whatever, before 2001. It never existed. It simply came into existence because of what happened on September in 2001. The magnitude of what happened, retrocausality, it says, doesn't just ripple out into the future. Where now you got to take your shoes off at the airport and somebody puts on a big rubber rubber glove and sticks it up your ass at the airport. There's a lot of future ramifications and ripples per what happened in September. But per our senses and our limited short-sightedness of being a human being, well, that could never happen in the past because our senses just say that's impossible. Well, probably a little bit of wisdom comes by saying what your senses are basically lying to you and and even... This, what, what information the senses pull forth from reality and what's actually going on is so manipulated and twisted, and you've been so brainwashed since, work, since birth, the best thing anybody could do is probably to say, I, I abandon the senses and try to come up with a, an explanation that actually goes against the senses. So maybe a lot of these things never actually happened in the past. 
And I absolutely keep that on the table because of one major example, many reasons, but I'll show you the example. It's, it gets back to the, the Peter Stuyvesant commercial that I talked about a few months back um, regarding all the 9-11 references in a little old cigarette commercial that was shown in Dutch movie theaters in the 70s. Sure, uh, they just went out of their way to plant that. They say it doesn't make any sense. Good morning to you. I'm Larry Robinson. We're the Wake Up Crew here at Disco 22 WPCU. We have 52 degrees. Skies are sunny now in New York City. A good day is coming up to... Well, it's 60 years old this afternoon. New York. Some punk-ass Peckerwood Boy production from the 70s for a bullshit cigarette brand that was shown in movie theaters inside, um, well, select movie theaters in Holland or Netherlands in the friggin' 70s. Probably XXX movie theaters with guys with masks on with their pants down. Um, I, I doubt the Illuminati went out of their way <laughs> to put five or six major 9-11 references in some bullshit Peckerwood Boy Peter Stuyvesant commercial from the friggin' 70s, yet it's here. And it's not just one thing to latch on to. There's five or six major things. I'll show you the top three or four. You don't remember this video. I covered it a few months back. But what's coming up uh, pretty early on here is amazing. Uh, it's the way this bird flies right through the building in the exact same perspective of the famous CNN footage of Tower 2. The most, look at that. Oh, well, I'll show it to you again. It's a little bit. The bird in the same perspective of what we saw on 9-11. Look at this. I mean, very similar. The plane coming in, that famous footage of the of what's supposed to... Look, I don't need a lecture on what actually happened on 9-11 either. I'm, this isn't my first truth rodeo. It's not the point here. I'll get a, I'll get a lecture from somebody commenting. But look at that. The same perspective. You think somebody planned that? You think somebody from the lodge made a phone call? No. And if that was the only thing, I'd say that's a fucking coincidence. But the, the, this, the Peter Stuyvesant is riddled with that shit. For, for a little, whatever it is, one minute, it's got five major 9-11 references. That's a 9-11 reference right there. Look, look at that. I mean, notice that as your 11-9, it's your Back to the Future 9-11 reference. Guys, it ain't just people all the time planning shit. It's, it weaves its way through reality itself. I mean, this is another image of somebody, what somebody sent me, what I call the drunken chemtrail. Just a regular airline pilot, you know, saw something on the ground he wanted to get a better look at, and he... Ladies and gentlemen, on the left side of the cockpit, would you like to take a better look at those cows down there? I'd like to swing the plane around. So he did. And that's how, I guess, the normies around us would explain it away. So where are we? One is it's just all the stuff that's being laid down, of which there's a thousand more examples that I can't show you here. It's just mockery. Okay. Number two, it's a universal law, karma law, cosmic law of karma. They have to show us before they screw us. Three is retrocausality. It doesn't have anything to do with Bozo here. I'm just filling space. It's a lot of this shit, or a percentage of it, like the bird flying through the building. It didn't even happen. But the, the event was so massive that throw, throw a, a little pebble into a pond. Where does the ripple go? Just one little direction? It goes in all directions. The ripple goes all directions. In my opinion, the past could be. It doesn't appear to be fluid at all. It could be as this fluid as, um, I just put this in for a laugh, could be as fluid as the future. Who knows? Mandela-affected people aren't rolling their eyes at me. They live with that shit. And the last possibility is they aren't showing us anything at all. Why do we think it's they and the Henry Kissingers and the George Bush creatures serving the crimpets to whatever's heavy breathing in the back room? Maybe they ain't showing us anything. But somebody is, or something is, or someone is, or reality itself is a separate entity from the minions or the dark force behind the screen. Something is, is showing us, but why do we think it's associated with, with jack-offs like Barack Obama, George Bush, the Rothschilds, the Kissingers, and all uh, the, the Grove, and all, that, all those people? No. It might be something completely different showing us. 
No, I don't like the word white hat or real, a certain element of reality is working on our side or somebody yelling out to their computer right now saying, Matt's finally coming around to, to Mother Sophia. No, I'm not. I mean, who knows? I'm just asking you to leave on the table. It could be something else. It could be something else. It could be something related to your own higher self that's not even in this place. I'm just asking you to think big. Think bigger than it's just mockery and they chub up and they like they 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 make collages of all the ways they've mocked us and then they get off on it. Um so let's go over this, this look, at some point my bookends do come to an end. Like was it the thirteenth floor where you come to the end of reality and it just goes pixels, the movie, the thirteenth floor, if it's called, you just we're at the end of reality, it just goes it just goes digital. It goes plaid, like in the space balls, it just goes plaid. So I can't come up with anything else besides this. But this is this, in terms of how this reality works, I think this is getting pretty close in terms of all the possibilities. And it might be all of these. It's not just pick one. It might be all of these. Mockery. A universal law says they, ha they this would be the Kissinger freaks, have to show us where they violate or they break contract. This is very similar to one thing I wrote about the, the, la the first conversation you have after a failed earthly assignment or a failed incarnation talked about a violation of potential violation of contracts in that third is retrocausality a lot of this this shit uh, in the future they they didn't make no safe space and what's that other marvel character safe space and snowflake it, it was inserted back into reality bad example but you know what i mean i'm not really i'm just filling space with with frauds um oh kennedy by the way i just have to mention what a coincidence that the granddaughter of RFK is, is is the one that died recently. Um, come on, I don't believe it. What a joke! Don't believe that for a second. The Kennedys have to follow the script of this reality, which relates to the band, the the rock band, the Dead Kennedys. It's a script the Kennedys have to follow. Even something like the Beatles. Um, of course, this is a great example of everything planned by regular men and women, by Tavistock. But once they do something successfully, how do you know that they don't initiate retro causalities or they don't prime a pump where reality itself starts to conform with this is very similar to Vat City's reality canals theory, I believe. So men and women might prime the pump, but reality itself might come along like a magnet dragging iron filings, for example. So you have mockery, universal law slash universal law of karma, retrocausality, a lot of this shit never happened to begin with. It just pops up in what seems to be our past. And they aren't showing us anything at all, is the fourth possibility. Um, they aren't showing us anything at all. Something else is showing us, no matter what you think that something else is. Some people would say the earth itself, the reality itself, Mother Sophia, whatever. There's a million possibilities there too. God, people would say, I mean, I don't know, did God make a Peter Stoyvis on a commercial? No, but, you know, again, you talk for an hour and see if you don't, you don't come up with some dumb shit. Um, last one is it, it, reality some way, this is related to number four, flows through the artist. Where they would say, did Robert Zemeckis and Back to the Future plan all that? Or did something flow through him? as a director he wasn't even aware of. Okay, coming up are the four major clips from this Peter Stuyvesant. <laughs> I can't laugh every time I... Um, it was shown in Dutch movie theaters. <laughs> here are four incidences. Now one, I'll show it to you twice, something screams in like a plane screams real heavy past the Statue of Liberty per the camera view over the Twin Towers. Then it shows Rockefeller Center. And then the couples at dinner, trust me, the, the World Trade Center is, is, is behind them in the window very, very briefly. Good morning to you. A city so great they went and named it twice. New York. A city so great they went and named it twice. Twin Towers, there's a window that looks down on everything in the world. Time for a gourmet slice of the Big Apple. The Twin Towers, there's a window that looks down on everything in the world, showing Rockefeller Center. And buildings that look like the World Trade Center, I didn't even know we were next to Rockefeller Center, looks down on everything in the world. Reminds me of this. Yeah. 
Someone's got to be oppressed. Of course this qualifies as mocking. I don't believe this is a retro causality with these geeks and their little dance troupe getting on the World Trade Center during construction. Someone's got to be oppressed. This this is just this is of men, regular men and women. I'll give you that. And this doesn't just show a nine, that's the twin towers off to the left. It's not just a, a giant nine. That's the twin towers off to the left. Flashes then right over to the nine. I didn't just show this because there was a nine. The Twin Towers form the 11 right here. So, in a Peter Stuyvesant commercial, th this is where I would say, no, this it, it, something else supernatural happened here. Hello, this Illuminati window. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, we're filming a commercial uh, for a Peter Stuyvesant cigarettes, which will be shown in Dutch movie theaters between 1972 and 1974. We just want to check with the Illuminati window. Do I need to make any uh, symbolism references, symbolism to things coming, symbolism that you're going to impose on society, or any alchemical symbols that I need to show in my two-bit Peckerwood Boy commercial? Let me check, sir. Thank you for calling. We always appreciate you checking with the Illuminati window. I'll get right back to you. Please hold. Uh, yes, sir. I'm glad you called. Uh, you, you said a cigarette commercial? Any cigarette commercial, even for some two wood, like you said, Peckerwood brand. I'm not sure what the hell that is, but any cigarette commercial that's going to be shown between 72 and 74 has to have a series. I mean, you won't understand what the fuck I'm talking about, but it's something called 9-11 references. You will need a series of 9-11 references. And do you have a fax number? Seven? No, you won't. It's 72. You, what you will do is you will go to this pay phone Here's the number, here's the location. You will get a phone call at exactly 9.11 p.m. next Tuesday where you will await your 9.11 instructions. Now these things, don't these people don't mess around. You will have to have these references in your commercial or the men in black will come see you, my friend. Okay, so here's the one through five and I hope nobody votes in the comments because of the one takeaway I'd want people to take away from this is it's likely two or three of these things are happening or four of these things are happening, not just to pick one. Those stuck on the mockery, I want you to, to say that, well, there's another, at least one or two other things may be happening as well, not just this. I've given tribute to those that are just stuck on the mockery because I pointed out three, four things here that are obvious, just mockery done by regular men and women at the middle level, minion level. I think there's a whole lot more going on here than what happens at the lower level, middle level, Kissinger minion level. A lot more. I believe the reality itself acts in many ways like it's alive. So I'm not going to limit it to people that sit on the pot. But I have given plenty of tribute to people that believe it's one. I, someone's got to be oppressed. That's Of course, that's just men doing that. That's not some weird retro causality. But let's move on. It's not just one of these. Please don't vote on one. It's many of these. Two, it's a universal law of some kind. Matt called it in the old days the cosmic law of karma that says, if we're going to screw these people over here, somehow we have to show them. We got to put it into a Back to the Future movie or put it somewhere in some obscure place where they won't even recognize what they're looking at anyway. But that kind of gets us in a roundabout fashion. And we can satisfy our contract. Now, unless you've been looking at this stuff for 10 years and you've seen a thousand of these examples, this is one, the junior high school truther will absolutely roll their eyes over come on a universal law that well i'm just telling you to be open-minded to it the longer you do this the more thousands of things you look at the smart people you come across that are smarter than you are in many areas this not only starts to make more sense there's almost no other way to explain certain things than this okay and it's it's ignorant to, to dismiss this because well the, the the minions, whatever you think these minions here that pull all the strings and push all the buttons, they have no laws they have to abide by. They're so powerful, they put themselves here? They built this construct? No. The hijackers of this construct luckily have nothing to do with the building of it, and they're not that all-powerful. So I would think, yes, even those bastards have to obey certain rules, contractual or not, whatever you want to call it. Three, retrocausality. Well, my senses tell me only the future can be affected by what I do now. If I fought in the elevator, people will, will leave. See, that's, 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 that, that, oh, that's only pushing it into the future. No, the senses are liars. And the smarter 
someone gets in truly opening their mind to the possibilities of this incredible reality, you see how the past can be potentially affected by the future. Okay? Mandela affected people would never roll their eyes at me. They see this. They have anchor effects in their lives where they say, yeah, that changed. Yeah, we'll blend. That that changed. Yeah, it was this. Now it's that. Uh, this guy making this presentation, he was he, he was pretty good for a while, but now now I see he falls for that psyop called the Mandela effect. Like, like it just fell off the turnip truck. I can't make that determination on my own. I, I, I fall for every psyop that they put forth. I'm known. Quantum of consciousness is known to fall for psyops. Just telling you, not every, most people don't see the Mandela effect. That's fine, but you can still explore retrocausality. You can still say things like, yeah, once they're putting five or six, there's five or six or seven 9 11 references in Peter Stoyva's song, guys. I'm only showing you the top four. There are others, more subtle. If they're putting 9 11 references in bullshit like that, okay, then. It, when she, once you see this happens over and over again, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, then you, when you come to the conclusion that it's just men and women not making phone calls since 1945, 19, what, in 1961, um, um, Looney Tunes, the towers, the towers, unless they're calling it in every time, then this should be on the table. Okay. It, it, not not with the major ones like The Simpsons. Don't, Matt, don't you know The Simpsons and Matt Groening is at the creepy table? I know that. Obviously, I know that. The big ones, I'm not saying are going to be a retro causality, but the little ones, the little subtle ones, you know, just the, the coding of the, the release of the Michael Douglas movie, you know, just in the, in the in every little thing, every 33 we've seen built into a news headline for 15 years. It's not all done by men. It's a retro causality. It's something that weaves through reality. Number four, that the Kissinger types and the Jared Kushner types minions, we think, well, they must be doing it to us. No, maybe something else is showing us. Maybe reality itself is showing us. Maybe it's something we don't understand, but we always assign it to the bad guys. Oh, they have to show us. We always, it's, it's limited to always have to assign it to the bad guys when it might be something else, something we haven't even considered. And the last one, which we didn't talk about much, I didn't talk about much. I mean, you know, I say we a lot, but that means the comments coming back. Um, is, you know, definitely, I know, I, I the, the barely human whatever people that made the great video, Back to the Future predicts 9-11, I, I don't, I commented it and I said, well, is this kind of what you're saying? Of course, anybody that really has any incredible information about how the reality works, always cryptic about it for some reason. Even the new video from Chiron's last, it's always cryptic. I appreciate the video, haven't heard from this person for five years, Chiron's last, but I want to say, you know, if you know something, just speak English, just, just, you know, if I know something, I'm just going to tell you, okay? I'm not going to be all cryptic about it. But the people at Barely Human, whatever, that made Back to the Future predicts 9-11, um, I said, so it sounds like what you're saying here is Robert Zemeckis wasn't in on it. He didn't get a phone call to plan all that stuff. He didn't get a phone call to tie in 9-11 here and there. But it's just kind of like somehow the event, it's like a retro causality. The event is so big that it ripples back and works its way through art, even into the past, works its way through art and creativity, even of the past. And if you've seen videos about all of the times the Twin Towers have been destroyed in movies, TV shows, The Lone Gunman, endless comic book covers and comic books, and it's not commensurate with other things being destroyed. The only thing that even comes close probably is... Um, the Golden Gate Bridge, and that's mostly in movies, not in comic books. But in other words, the Empire State Building is far more famous than the Twin Towers, yet it's not destroyed even one-third of the amount of times, or even one-fifth of the amount of times as the Twin Towers have been destroyed prior to 9-11 in music, rap music, movies, comic books, TV shows. Well, bad. I, I, did you hear what this guy just said? He said the Twin Towers aren't as famous as um, the, the, the world, as something like the Empire State Building or some of these other buildings um, like the Eiffel Tower or the Golden Gate Bridge. Whoever said that 
to me must be under age 35. The Twin Towers are only the most famous thing of all time only because of what happened. Sure, we knew about the Twin Towers. They were in a few things. But they weren't everybody's focus. They're not, they weren't world famous before September of 2001. So why would the number of times they're destroyed be five times the other famous structures like the Golden Gate Bridge or the, or the Eiffel Tower, and 10 to 100 times over other structures that would have been just as famous at the time, like the Taj Mahal or like the, um, the, the bridge over the Thames and th just things like that. Or the, you know, the, 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 um, the, there, there's the amount of times that the damn Twin Towers were destroyed, um, it, do, it only makes sense in two, in two ways. Three, well, three ways. One, you could say, sure, the Illuminati window called it in because they knew it was going to happen. Then, of course, you'd have more destruction in comic books. But I don't think the Illuminati window is calling all the comic book people. So it's to me, it, with all the little stuff where it where it, it kind of shows up all the time. In, in big stuff, sure, it could be planned by the Illuminati window. But the little stuff like Wonder Woman comic books from '76, you know, all that crap we've seen, it's either a retro causality with the past literally changed. Or somehow we are, you know, people have aspects in them now of the future, the past, and it just weaved its way through the creative art of whoever was composing that art. Thanks for listening.